Showing my appreciation, I appreciate my guest, Miss Lakeisha Greenway. Thank, thank you for joining you. me so much this evening. How are you? I'm outstanding, and thank you for the opportunity. Outstanding. I, I like it. Now, <laughs> you are fresh from Orlando. You had an opportunity to go to the yes. NFL Pro Bowl experience. Tell me a little bit about that, because I still see that Florida glow in your face. You do? It I was do. a little chilly in Florida. In Florida? It was a little chilly. I had on my winter coat. But it was a great time just reconnecting with some friends and reliving my days when I actually performed at the Pro Bowl. Okay. Way back in the day. So you performed at the Pro Bowl. Now that I didn't know. I didn't yes. have the opportunity to figure that out in the bio. So tell me about that. That's <laughs> that's that sounds cool. Before I was a businesswoman, I was an all American cheerleader. I've trained all Americans around the country. And so I always tell folks that my claim to fame is performing with salt and pepper during halftime. Wow. So it was ah push it. Real good. Like a salt <laughs> and pepper moment. It was that song Giddy Up, uh, like Giddy? Yeah, the Western okay. song, whatever. Okay. So we did that during and, halftime. And you did a little bit of this as well? Oh, yeah, I did a okay. little bit of that. Okay, I got you. I got you. I got you. On a serious note, uh, prior to the show, and people at home you know, watching, they obviously have the opportunity to see this, but prior to the show, I said you are a social butterfly. Yes. You are here, there, and a little bit of everywhere. Yes. So let me ask you this question. When I was actually thinking about you as a great potential fit in terms of a guest for a show, I looked at your bio, and I saw literally a 1,000 titles, a 1,000 <laughs> positive things that you were involved in. But to someone home watching, how would you accurately and, and best describe yourself? Well, you can describe me as a change maker, uh, a wealth creator, um, and one that is making sure that our leaders are empowered and efficient to make change. Wow, wow, wow. A wealth creator. H how do you Absolutely. create wealth in, in some of the businesses that you have, which we'll talk about shortly? Okay. So through one of our platforms, uh, it's called Glam Tech. It's a program that I produce via my company, Lucky Fit LLC. Uh, we're creating wealth via wearable tech through the creation in Baltimore as well as around the country. Now, exactly what is wearable tech? Because when I hear wearable tech, I'm thinking like Silicon Valley. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking of something else. That's not necessarily doesn't resonate with Baltimore. So what is wearable tech? Because I, I like it and it's catchy. But for somebody home right now watching and saying, wow, what is what is wearable tech? So what is that? Yeah. And you're not alone when you say what is wearable tech? Wearable tech is a category within technology uh, that creates devices that can be worn on the body as well as software that can simulate uh, wearing th certain things on the body or to track health um, and efficiency. Wow. So what got you into that? That is very interesting. It's I know. <laughs> It's very interesting. <laughs> so I am not the girl that grew up coding or, um, you know, getting into tech, that type of thing. Uh, my background is in economics. I've always been into business. Um, but I had a love of fashion mm -hmm. um, and style. And after business school, I had a very close friend that said, you know what, you're really good at that. You should do something with it. And that is something that is totally non-traditional when you are going through business school. Very um, non-traditional. Exactly. So they want you to be like the white collar, straight lace, you know, pick those types of careers. And so I dibbled and dabbled for a little bit, just looking at the industry here in Baltimore, mm -hmm. the designers, the makers, et cetera. And then um, by being involved, I saw that there was um, an, emerging, an emerging industry with tech. And so considering that retail and fashion overall mm -hmm. um, is dying from the brick and mortar standpoint, um, if anyone is going to survive, um, meaning the traditional um, fashion makers, designers, or whatnot, they have to incorporate tech. So being the mm. nerd that I am, did some <laughs> research. <laughs> and for me, it's not, you know, not a lot, but other folks will be like, oh, well, she's like totally into that. Um, but I decided that, you know, Baltimore was a great place to start a mecca and a platform to not only create wearable mm -hmm. tech, but to promote it um, and to help not only you know adults but even our youth to find a way that they can create their own um, niche in the industry and build wealth. 
Wow. So in essence, you created your own lane, mm -hmm. which I absolutely yes. love. In addition to that, you created this lane in a city that is not known for that. So how difficult were the initial stages of literally jumping out there, combining fashion and technology in a place like Baltimore? We really don't view Baltimore as a place, again, prior to the show we talked about, maybe a city on the West Coast. Right. That the, the demographics indicate that people would be more in tuned and more responsive to, to that. So right. how was that, that, the initial stages of it? Right. So the initial stage is so it, it's a it's a big goal for me to say I'm going to rebrand Baltimore and make us the wearable tech, you know, hub of America. Mm -hmm. um, but Baltimore has a tremendous history um, as it relates to contributing to the fashion um, industry and um, also to, um, you know, makers or whatnot. So before I mean, everybody thinks New York, New York, New York. Mm -hmm. But you could talk to some of the fashionistas in the city, and they'll tell you that Baltimore was very significant in providing apparel for the country wow. um, in pre-war times or whatnot. And so if you go to the Baltimore Museum of Industry, you'll see the contribution there. So what's happened is that that history has gotten lost mainstream. And so the great thing is that the talent is here. Um, the infrastructure is coming back from the standpoint of manufacturing. Um, and so those that are in that space, be it fashion, be it beauty, be it tech, they understand um, their particular industries. And when I brought them all together last year, they said, wow, this is something that we can do. The, the challenge, however, with creating something very new in a new space, because I'm a girl from Ohio. Um, shout, out to, <laughs> shout out to Ohio, by the way. Wait, shout here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the challenge is... Um, number one, understanding the impact of tech. Let's keep it real. Tech is something that we're still learning. Mm -hmm. okay? Absolutely. Um, you know, we're, we're telling our kids, get into tech, but we're not, we really don't know how they should get involved in tech, mm -hmm. so to speak. Um, I can tell you that I didn't get my first computer until after I had graduated college and wow. I had lived in Baltimore. So I'm not, again, so I'm not coming from the standpoint of, having grown up in a tech world, I had a lot of friends that were engineers, but I just had a lot of a love of fashion. So to mainstream folks, mm -hmm. be it educated or non-educated, wearable tech is something that is like, what? <laughs> and so basically over the past year, um, the effort has been trying to create some awareness as to what comprises wearable tech, um, what are some uh, devices that you can find in that particular category. Mm -hmm. And so we've been helping to educate um, via our hashtag Wearable Wednesday. Uh, you'll see us on Instagram. We love Instagram. We like Facebook too. But we do a lot more <laughs> posting on Instagram where every Wednesday we post the wearable tech innovation and how it relates to someone like, you know, ourselves on a daily basis. So you'll see things from um, insoles that are heated. You'll see things from apps where, where you can um, create your closet and have stylists help you create a look. Mm. You'll see things such as wearable tattoos that help to track your vitamin D intake from the sun. So there is a number of wow. different things that wearable wow. tech encompasses. And, and the great thing is that we're in a space now where we do have the emerging tech industry, we have the established fashion industry, we have makers and, and we have some warehouses that are changing into manufacturing of facilities where we are in a prime position to create and really take America by storm. Wow. Now, was it difficult for you to get support from businesses? And again, I'm, I'm thinking about a, a place like Baltimore. So looking from this at this from afar, if I'm a business, I would say, eh, I'm not really sure because Baltimore doesn't jump out as a city that has tech. So how difficult was that for you to get those businesses to come in and really support what you were doing? Great question. So it was extremely difficult from... I wouldn't say like the big business side, mm -hmm. um, but from your small businesses or whatnot, because again, that comprehension just wasn't there. Mm -hmm. I will say unofficially, Under Armour, um, as well as Ralph Lauren, I told them the idea, they loved it. Mm. The thing is, however, they are big players in the wearable tech industry. Under Armour is a wearable tech company. Absolutely. So they are looking like, who is this girl <laughs> <laughs> coming into our space, trying to, you know, take away some of Stomp our stuff on their toes. and help some small businesses gain some market share. But they love the idea. I do foresee some collaborations in the future, you know, so shout out to um, Under Armour as well as the folks at Ralph Lauren that are doing, you know, great things in wearable tech and as well as, you know, like the company's uh, Cover Girl. Uh, Baltimore based they've been doing some things with wearable tech and, and L'Oreal as well Wow. now again as I was reading the bio you know doing my homework trying to get ready for you <laughs> uh, 
few things that just absolutely stood out, um, and we'll talk about those right now. You received the prestigious award. The Baltimore yes. Business Journal named you top 40 under 40. Yes. What was that like? Wow. That, I mean, it was just like, wow, they chose me. And the timing of the award was perfect because I was really discouraged because taking on a task such as trying to rebrand Baltimore and bring a, you know, a new industry to a city mm -hmm. is something that is not easy um, and it's something where you need a lot of people to help you. And I was really frustrated because I poured all of my own money um, into you know, bringing the first Glam Tech Expo to life. Mm -hmm. And then to, on the tail end, be recognized by the Baltimore Business Journal was just like amazing. And it was that confirmation that even though you know things were hard and everyone didn't understand you, all you need is the right people to understand mm. you <laughs> and to get behind you so that you can you know gain traction. So in addition to the Baltimore Business Journal, um, the Alumni Association at The Ohio State University also named me as a Buckeye under 40. So 2016 was pretty phenomenal um, mm. from award standpoint. Now, you do a lot of coaching as well, and yes. another uh, award that um, you were honored to have is Forbes. Yes. Right? So we're talking the Forbes. Forbes. The Forbes. Forbes Magazine. Wow. You look at all that. Yeah, Forbes. So they wanted you on their coaches council. Is that yes. correct? Yes. Now, what was that like? We're talking about a Baltimore business journal, and then we're talking about Forbes. Yes. And one of the things that I follow you on social media that you always, you know, you kind of throw out there is I'm just a little girl from Akron. Yes. So this little girl from Akron, Forbes, <laughs> called you. I mean, what what is that like? It's amazing. But, you know, when I talked to my um, old hairdresser um, in Akron, Ohio, hi, Monica from Monte Carlos. Check out her product. It's on my page. Hi, Monica. <laughs> Do you think you can style me one day, Monica? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. She'll tell you that um, I was going to her when I was, at six, uh, I was 16 years old, mm -hmm. and I would be reading Black Enterprise Magazine, like studying that magazine. So looking at it mm -hmm. now, it's like, you know, it was just preparation for, you know, where I am right now. And it was a total shock, a total mm -hmm. surprise. Never would I have thought that Forbes said, hey, you know, you're a thought leader in America. Um, you know, we want to hear your perspective on certain things, and we want you to help bring some stories to life for our readers. What? Wow. Really? Wow. So it's, a, it's an amazing <laughs> platform. <laughs> 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 the live uh, studio audience, uh, Lakeisha was surprised by the clapping. So such a, a huge audience. <laughs> but I mean, it, it's a it's an amazing honor. Um, it's a privilege, mm -hmm. um, but and it's also motivation to create some businesses to take to market, and um, to be in that position where I can coach them to success. Wow. Um, just want to interact with some people right now on Facebook Live. Uh, congratulations, Sister Jacqueline. Jacqueline, thank you for checking in. She said she finally made the show. Great, thank Prior you. Prior to that, uh, we had somebody, it was Chandra uh, Carter, said, Coach L, you go. Thank you. So, yes, people are definitely uh, in, in tune with the movement that, that you have going on. Um, yes. Another question that, that I wanted to ask you is you're also, you have this title, Coach L. Yes. And what are you actually coaching people to do? Because a lot of our audience, especially Facebook, they are really in tune to being entrepreneurs mm -hmm. um, and they, they want their brand to be a lot better. So kind of yes. tell people about the coaching services that you actually offer. Okay, great. Um, so with coaching, I uh, historically focus more so on executive coaching. So you're, I'm talking about your senior leaders, your C-suite folks. Um, even some middle managers um, in private sector as well as in, in public sector um, so that they can be better leaders, so that they can lead a more efficient organization, and also so that they can make sure that their organizations would stand the test of time. Um, so they want their organization to say, oh, we've been here um, so many hundreds of years, mm -hmm. and you know, we want to make sure that um, you know, we're a top 20 or a top 100 type company. Um, so taking that, that skill set, working, um, uh, in the coaching sector, but also more so in the marketing sector, mm -hmm. um, I understand the power of a brand more so than ever these days. Mm -hmm. And considering that we we are moving into a realm where we will have, I think, five generations that will be working in the in the workplace for the first time in history. Wow! So there is going to be some challenges in the workplace. Needless to say, um, some folks are going uh, some folks are going to need to learn how to work together. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> I do coach um, a number of uh, graduate students that are interested into the workforce so that they can make sure that um, they are positioned correctly, that they are seen as a leader, that they are not 
um, that they don't fulfill the stereotype based off of their generational category. Um, and I also do coach entrepreneurs that are working to um, build their business, uh, build their presence, um, and then also uh, assist them with some marketing efforts. So from the marketing side, um, so I, well, I guess I should back up and say Lucky Fit LLC, that's, that's my company, Lucky Fit LLC. We also produce glam events, but uh, we are a coaching and a consulting firm. So I do a lot of the coaching, um, but as far as more ingrained or in-depth marketing services, I have a team of marketers, the top marketers in the country, those that have worked for like the Procter and Gamble, mm. those that have done um, some of the bigger names in the industry. Right? Exactly, those that have done marketing on on the uh, uh, in America as well as internationally. Um, so they are prepped and prepared to provide services to those businesses that I work with, um, depending on, on what their need is. What is the biggest piece of information that you can give to an entrepreneur? Again, a lot of the people out there are probably looking for some advice in terms of how do I do it. You read all of this information. Social media obviously allows us to have access to tons and tons of articles and videos. But what is the biggest piece of advice? Because even with all the information that we have, I, I still think that people need guidance in terms of entering that entrepreneurial space. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and even those that have been in business for a while, they need guidance because it can be lonely. Um, but the I, I guess going back to the whole branding piece is that you can't run away from branding. Mm. It doesn't matter if, if you're an individual, if you're you know looking for a job, or if you're trying to create jobs or to create opportunities. Um, branding will stay with you. I know there was a piece that came out on social media with the young lady saying, I'm not a brand. I totally disagree. Um, for instance, if you know, if let's say you have a child that's in elementary school and your child has a friend whose mother you know, comes to school every day with a rag on her head and slippers, <laughs> um, you're gonna think something about that particular mother. She's branding herself in one way. So a brand is everything that you do. Um, it's, it's, the, it's the way that you um, prepare yourself for the world. So from your knowledge intake is also your associations. Um, you know, as children, we heard from our parents, you know, watch, watch who you're friends with, birds mm -hmm. of a feather flock together. So all of those things are representative of who you are. And so it's very important that you are mindful of your presence, your presence, which equals brand, whether that be in person, on social media, even from answering the telephone. That says volumes about you. So if you are one that wants to now be taken seriously. Now let me stop you. The way you answer the telephone, yes. that can give you an indication in terms of who you are as a person yes. and may ultimately negative or positively affect your brand. Absolutely. Tell me how. So, for instance, if you have a business telephone number and you answer, hello, mm. and you're a business, automatically I discredit you. Um, so if you're a business, uh, if you don't have an answering service, you know you should at least be answering hello. My uh, this is so. My name is so and so. Or hello, this is X Y Z business, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so you definitely want to make sure that that presence is there to make sure that that notates that you are professional. Let's say you don't have a business. Let's say you're looking for a job. In many in many cases, I'll answer my phone. Hi, this is Lakeisha. Mm. Not hello. Who is this? <laughs> So you can't that. answer the phone. Who, who this is? Oh, my gosh. I hate that. Wow. I absolutely okay. hate that. So, um, you know, we, we definitely need to monitor even even those little things. Um, our presentation style, that's a big deal. Um, so I, I coach a lot on the three facets of confidence, your energy, and your style. Um, you'll see on Instagram, I, I talk a lot about uh, complainers. We don't like complainers. Complainers don't get far. They don't get far. So your energy is uh, is very, very important. Having um, a sense of positivity, uh, being a problem solver, those things will take you far, regardless if you're in business, business for yourself or if you're just representing yourself as an individual that is seeking to be a leader. Now, what is the impact of social media on branding? Because a lot of people, again, it's sort of the thing that you hear about, that you can think about something but you don't necessarily have to push send or you don't have to post it. So how how is social media the impact that it has on branding? Because I see a lot of people that brands instantly are elevated by social media. Yes. And then within the same breath, I see people on a daily basis that their brand drastically decreases quick, fast, and in a hurry yes. because of social media. So what would you advise people about 
social media. Watch your associations, number one. Um, for instance, just take a look at Uber, the hashtag delete Uber mm. campaign. Uh, your associations and your belief systems definitely play into your your brand or the, or the uh, um, persona of, mm. of your brand. Let's say you're on social media as an individual, but then you also have business pages. People will know that you may be promoting your business, and let's say you are really foul um, on social media on your personal page, mm. but then you try to represent something totally different on business. <laughs> Understand right. this. People talk. Absolutely. And Absolutely. one of the best ways to grow business is through referrals, um, through those that are going to be your advocates. And so if people don't get that positive energy, that positive vibe, they don't want to be associated with you, and they're not going to recommend you. Absolutely. And a Jacqueline. Thank you, Jacqueline, for uh, <laughs> your comment was right on point. Presentation is everything. Yes. Um, so it, it's very important that people kind of understand that, and I'm glad that Lakeisha was able to give that information to people because social media, I see it so, I mean, literally on a daily basis when I wake up and begin to look at my social media account, I see people that they try to make the transition from a personal <laughs> page and then they come back on the business page with things that really don't match up people are actually watching potential employees are watching and if they yes. have a business and they're trying to grow that business by getting clients the clients are watching as well so people are always always watching so tell me about the glam retreat because i know you you have one coming yes up, correct? yes so i do about that that sounds like an excellent opportunity um if you still have spaces available for people to really take advantage of your services uh just more than maybe an hour or two. It's a full weekend dedicated to. Yes, it okay. is. Okay, tell people about that. So the Glam Retreat is, again, is an extension of the Lucky Fit brand where we are empowering and encouraging leaders and influencers. It's the opportunity to partake in self-care. And I can say this from experience. Um, that in many cases as leaders, we don't allow ourselves to take a break. Mm. In many cases, we have to be told. And it's quite difficult, especially if you are one that is working your job and, you know, a part-time entrepreneur uh, on paper. Um, <laughs> or, or even if you're just starting your business and until you get it up, let's say, you know, even until you raise like a million dollars worth of funding, you're grinding. Mm -hmm. You are Absolutely. grinding. There's Every always day. something to do. And so basically with the Glam Retreat, it's, an, it's, that, it's that permission slip that says, you know what, take a pause. Let's take care of you. And we're going to do it with some glam. So we provide some workshops, that, um, and we bring in some coaches. Shout out to Bridget the Go Coach. Uh, shout out to the Happiness Coach Ursula. Um, so they're out of Tampa, Detroit. Uh, shout out to Coach Randy in Baltimore. Um, and also Candace Green with uh, Cherished Flight. Um, and we have some, uh, I'll remember some of our other folks. I apologize right now if I forgot. But basically, we are doing assessments. Where are you? Are you burned out? How can you overcome it? What's some ways that we can incorporate balance? Are you really happy? Do you have joy? Because that's, that's a huge element to everything. Yeah, yeah, because what's in you is going to come out. So again, as a part of that brand, you are your business. So if there's dysfunction on the inside, eventually it's going to show up on the outside. So we want to say, you know what? Pause. Bring it on in. Let's take care of you for a second. But then also, let's build you up too. So we'll have our glam squad on site. Uh, my styling team, our hairstylists, um, fashion designers, uh, those that are in the beauty and the health industries, mm -hmm. um, to give that little makeover um, as well to those that are in attendance. And then we have lavish dinners and happy hours and cooking sessions and things like that. Now the thing here though, is that, that sounds like, now do you have any spots available for me? Am I allowed to come? The men have asked us to host a glamour treat for them, and that is coming. Okay. And so I'll Please definitely keep make me sure posted. you have when that. When I heard lavish dinner, I was all in. Oh, thank you. I, I was all in after lavish dinner. You, yeah. you had me. So Yeah. So the men are like, we want this. So the, the first one we're doing is March 31st through April 2nd. Now, I, I want to notate that um, we're not just hosting any type of retreat. This is five-star level. And mm. so I'm doing business with um, Sheila Johnson. For those of you that do not know Sheila Johnson, she is a co-founder of BET. Mm -hmm. She's also an um, uh, investor in, part owner, I should say, in the Wizards, the Capitals, et cetera. So, and she owns a portfolio of resorts. So the Glam Retreat has a very strong partnership with the Salamander Resort. So we're bringing this on a five-star scale. And mm -hmm. why not be in an environment with a billionaire? so that we have those aspirations mm -hmm. to grow. So this is something that you can't duplicate. It is five-star quality all the way around. 
um, wow. and, and it's worth every penny. Um, actually, it's even worth more than what we're charging. Um, but all that information is on our website at Lucky Fit, L U C K I F S and Frank I T dot com. We do have a few slots left. And we do plan to do some additional retreats throughout the year to make sure that we are providing that space for leaders and influencers so that they can be their very best and do what they need to do to um, not only grow their businesses, but also impact the community in a positive way. Well, one of the things about the Glam Retreat, as you were talking about, that I really like, it it attacks the individual from a holistic perspective. Absolutely. I think it's very important to have that downtime. Mm -hmm. um, I think in addition to that, and I, I see you um, talk about it quite a bit, um, exercising yes. and eating right, and all of those things provide this holistic approach. So and sleep. it's very important. Sleep, wow. Sleep, we got these. Ah. Okay. Sleep in style. We're giving away a notori robe for the ladies, too. Wow. So everything is in style. Everything is glam with you. I like it. Absolutely. But this is a perfect opportunity talking about this holistic approach from health and wellness to mm -hmm. uh, to give a plug for one of our sponsors. Uh, this is a great opportunity to talk about Andre uh, Mondell and Next Level Training um, provided by Herbal Life Nutrition. And tell me, I can tell you this, that I'm a long distance runner. And one of the things that I do, I make sure that I have some Herbalife products ready so when I'm finished to run or prior to a run, I can go ahead and do it. Um, they provide personal training, group training, uh, online nutrition and supplementation. It's just a great, great opportunity. Again, I take advantage of some of the products, so I couldn't talk about a product that I've never had personally. It works for me. Please, by all means, give my guy a call, Andre Wayne Mundell, 443 uh, 304 7348, or even email him <laughs> at nextlevel.pt. <laughs> personaltraining.md at gmail.com. And again, once this video is actually sent out, I will include all of that information in there. But it's crucial that you take care of yourself from that holistic mm -hmm. perspective because you're talking about being in this entrepreneurial space, trying to be involved in a little bit of everything. You will eventually uh, burn out, or if you don't think you will, your body will force you to shut down. Um, and it's better to be proactive as opposed to reactive. So Absolutely. that's certainly something. Please take advantage of those services. And again, I'll include this information once the video is actually sent out, however you're watching it, uh, whether it's PowerPurposeRadio.com or Facebook Live yes. or even Instagram. I'll make sure that you have access to that to take advantage. So Absolutely. we're at that time in the show, Lakeisha. Wait, can I add something first? Yes, we're at that time in the show that I'm going to put you on the spot. Don't get nervous. Okay. This is a good thing. Okay, bring it so on. So I thought... For rapid fire, okay. I just remembered that you are a little girl from Akron, Ohio. Yeah, I'm just a gal from Akron, Ohio. Just a girl from Akron, Ohio. Yes. Ohio State graduate. Yes, the I'm Ohio a, State University. I'm a huge Michigan Wolverines football fan. So All right, where's that, my Buckeyes? I know that doesn't sit too well with you, so I'm going <laughs> to put you on the spot. And don't try to peek at my notes. Okay. okay. In the spirit of integrity, I'm going to start something, and I want you to finish it. Okay. You ready? You ready for this challenge? So you're you're gonna say something and I have to finish. You the have sentence? to finish it. Do okay. you accept this challenge? I accept. You accept this challenge. Okay. Men of the scarlet and gray, don't let them through that line. I need you to give me the last three words. So I repeat that. Men of the scarlet and gray, don't let them through that line. Charge, charge on down the field. That is <laughs> <laughs> That, that, is, da, 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 da. that is actually dun, 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 incorrect, dun, dun. the next three lines. <laughs> but I like your energy, though. I like your energy. Ohio. Okay. By my notes, it says, come on, Ohio. That's one of the Ohio State <laughs> fight songs. I wanted to put you on the spot. So I also want to ask you this question. Will you accept another challenge? Yes. Right? Now, if Michigan beats Ohio State, not if, but when Michigan beats Ohio State in the 2017 college football season, Will you accept the challenge to come back on the show to do another show in full Michigan attire, <laughs> hat, scarf, and a Michigan jersey? And this is all being recorded, so everything you say, I can go back to the tape and roll it. Will you accept that challenge? I hear you, Mr. Mills. <laughs> However, let the record show that Michigan could not beat the Ohio State University even when they brought an NFL coach to help their team. So, with that being said, do you accept my challenge? I know this is your show. Do you accept my challenge that when we